I'm going to be using the brand Spankin' New Stamp Set Cozy, which is literally cozy and cute explosion. I'm crazy about it. And if you're anything like me, tea and coffee are totally my jam all year long. But during the holidays, it's really, really cute to create little um, hot cocoa stations at home or even just have sweet little gift cards to hand out to people. So we're gonna do a couple varieties of um, stamped and watercolored projects featuring the Cozy Stamp. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is pull out a couple sheets of watercolor paper. Go ahead and grab yourself a couple sheets of scrap paper as well, because we're going to create some custom masks for them. And then we will start using other stamps that we have on hand. Um, one of the really good ones is Fruitful Harvest. Obviously from last year, it was absolutely adorable. Um, we also have uh, Merry and Bright, which create absolutely gorgeous little labels on the front of our little coffee cups, love. And oh, also cute little areas for like writing people's names. You can even just pop in cheer, just whatever you want. So obviously it makes it really nice and versatile for this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Oh, go also grab yourself some permanent ink. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start by pulling off the little paper go cup. And of course you guys know that you've gotta prep your stamps, just give them a little bit of a quick sanding. And because I'm not gonna use all of them right now, I'm not gonna do all of them, okay? So I'm just gonna peel this guy up. And I, um, I use small stamps from these sets on a regular basis. So I have one grid sheet that I use to kind of cut up in small pieces. So if you happen to have lots of these kind of kicking around, you can cut them smaller so that they're easier for you to use on smaller scale projects. So let's go ahead and get started by inking this up. And we're just gonna crank out a few of these little Go Cups stamped on the watercolor paper. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and heat set these. Rule of thumb for me is roughly five seconds. So that's super, super easy. We're gonna go ahead and cut these out. If you have fussy cutters, you can use your fussy cutters, but really any scissors will do. On one of the smaller pieces of scrap, I'm just gonna stamp the cut portion. I'm gonna cut off the little lip of the lid. So just make an extra one for yourself as well. Okay, so I also cut a little piece. Um, this is going to be really cute for the trim of our bag. We're looking at about five and a half by two inches for this piece here. And we're gonna go ahead and stamp this in black. Naturally, if you're doing these for Christmas, you can do more the red and green inks. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out some of my cinnamon sticks that were bound together. Okay, now if you happen to have a scoreboard, you can use a scoreboard. If you don't have one, just fold this in half. It's super, super simple. I'm using a tool called the We Are, um, and it basically is like the works. It's called the works because it has everything on it that you could possibly need. Off on the side here, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my bone folder. And because I know that this is a two inch piece, I can go ahead and score this. Let me get down here a little bit more. I can go ahead and score that at one inch and it will give me the absolute perfect crease and I can crank a bunch of these out. So I think this is probably coming together for you. are like, oh, I can see what she's doing. I'm gonna create this little baggie and if you do a bunch of these at the same time, you just kind of grab from your little baggie and then pop your gift cards in and you're good to go. The other thing I'm gonna do 
is this guy here that I trimmed down an extra go cut portion. I'm gonna trim off right about here. And you can go with the angle or you can just do a straight edge across. And if it's not perfect straight across, really no big deal. All right, so that's gonna fit perfectly on there. I have enough room to kind of slip a little um, gift card into or something like a little tea bag would be really sweet. Um, you know, sort of like a have a cup of tea on me sort of thing. All right, I think we are ready to rock and roll with our water coloring. Maybe we need a pumpkin. We need a pumpkin in here somewhere. So let's go ahead and grab a pumpkin stamp and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm just snagging the smaller pumpkin from the Fruitful Harvest stamp set. I have a piece of scratch paper here. Actually, I will tear this in half. So I have my little pumpkin that I'm gonna ink up and only stamp half onto. What side? Do we need the stem? I don't really think we have room for the stem, so I think we're gonna just do a halfsy. anything like me you get at least one pumpkin spice latte in the fall they're really sweet you know I don't know if you can have them every single day I don't think I can just because it's a little too much but it's a really nice treat so everything pumpkin spice is always a super cute phrase uh, phrase for me so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then we'll do sweet little pumpkin colors inside of that one as well Now, if you wanted to, you could be like super, super good and like stitch this on the side. If you have a sewing machine that you use for crafting, red thread in here and a really chunky large thread and even having some of the strings hanging down would be cute. Or you could simply use the mini attacher, which is kind of one of my favorites. I like a tiny little stapled edge so it looks cute to me. So I'll probably do that. Then of course we have our little pumpkin guy. I'm thinking that that needs to kind of end up on it somewhere. So we'll figure out how that's going to work. And then of course this little guy, loving this so much, this is gonna go on our sweet little package and we'll do something else in here as well for sort of like a fall or winter Christmas theme. I decided that we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of the wintry feel for this one here. So I'm just gonna do the cute little, almost, um, cross stitch pattern of the snowflake. All right, so let's do this with a bit of a wintry blue theme. That way it's not specific to Christmas, it could just be a little winter gift. I'm using a couple of different blues and a little bit of a turquoise to keep things interesting. Putting a little bit of water into my half pans, just for future reference. Like this took me years to build up. You guys don't expect to have sets like this, but when you have these little white squares, these are called half pans. And a lot of people don't know that when you get your tube paints, you basically squeeze your tube paints into the half pan so that you have something easily to grab and go. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're starting your little watercolor journey. I've got some ultramarine blue on my brush. And I'm gonna pick up some water, kind of just soften and push that sweet color blue all around my cup. And because I heat set this, and this is a permanent ink, I'm absolutely fine watercoloring on it. It's not gonna bleed on me. All right, so from here, I'm gonna pick up another blue. So I used ultramarine blue, this is phthalo blue. Again, it just keeps things nice and fresh and interesting when you mix things up. All my layers are still wet. So essentially this is considered wet into wet. I'm 
Now I'll go ahead and pick up a little of my turquoise. This is definitely wet into wet. Just kind of dropping this in, it'll create some really interesting color variation as this watercolor starts to dry. Now, as you can see in the stamp, they gave us the shadowing and the, um, the darkening of the cup with all of the extra line work here. So if you want to, you can actually add a little bit darker color in those areas to suggest and sort of help keep up with the whole idea that the cup has more shadow in that area. Okay, so there we go. Super pretty little cup. I'm gonna go ahead and speed dry that up. Okay, I'm not 100% dry yet, but that's okay. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of the ultramarine blue color and I'm gonna do some splats on this. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm going to drop a little bit of water into some of the areas that had been splat. This technique is called scumbling. And again, it just gives a little bit more interest to your piece. You can even come in and splat some more. All right, so that's good enough for me to set aside to dry thoroughly. Let's go ahead and bring out our fall theme. If you happen to still have a little bit of watercolor that's wet on your work surface, just make sure you dry it up so that you don't get it on the back of your fall one. Let's do something really nice and vibrant. So we'll make our Go Cup in a really bright orange. And if you've ever worked with watercolors before, you know that they dry a lot softer than they go down. So any chance you get to use these really vibrant colors, which for me is not very often, I love to go for it. We'll let that guy kind of dry up on its own. I'm gonna pick up something kind of in the um, burnt umber, so a nice brown for our cinnamon sticks. And you actually don't have to paint all of them. You know, you could totally just paint the, the one right up in the front. Everything else is just sort of suggested and already dark anyway. I'll do a little wet into wet with burnt sienna. If you want to suggest a little bit of color in there, not a full on paint, but you get the idea. And we really don't want to do the twine just yet. It would be really good to do in a, in a red if you were doing Christmas, but I might just leave it like that. We'll see. Um, okay. Let's dry this up the rest of the way. For the lid, you could just leave it as is, but what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of soft gray, particularly in the areas where you have some shadow. Just 
just gives the cup a bit more interest. Let's go ahead and start this pumpkin off with a bit of a yellow base. And this is a really sunshine yellow, almost orangey, so it's um, perfect for pumpkins. Move into a little bit more of a rusty orangey color. I'll pick up some of that same orange that I used as my background and kind of just drop it in while these yellows are still wet. Just play around with your colors, you know? If you've got just yellow and orange, play around with the concentration of red and yellow to create some different orangey colors. Lots of water. I just do lots of wet into wet to create more interesting pumpkin layers. That way they don't look all the same. And then of course I have to add a little bit of green because I absolutely adore when there's green in a pumpkin. I'm gonna dry that up. Pretty much nothing is done without splatter in my opinion. So I'm just coming in with like a really dark brown. You could do like a really dark gray, something like that, and I'm gonna splat. I'll even splat in my cinnamon stick just to give some more texture. Okay, set that aside. Now this one was gonna go with our blue theme so I'm gonna do a bit more kind of playful washes on this one. And then for this guy, I'm gonna go with kind of a traditional craft brown. I want it to look a little bit more like it was old school recycled cup kind of situation. So lay down a fairly large swipe of brown and then just coming in with water, you can kind of push that brown around to change the value. The more the water, the softer your color. And then you can always come in and reintroduce more brown. Okay, really, really simple. You don't have to think about this too much. And our stag, Let's just paint the whole thing. Splatting a little bit of a darker brown just to make it more interesting. And dry it up. Okay, so we're back to put everything together essentially, okay? So I have my tiny attacher, just a regular tiny stapler. I also have a corner rounder. A lot of you guys just have like a typical punch, which is fine. This one just happens to have two different size rounded off corners. And we're just gonna kind of finish things off. So let's do, see how nice that is? It just sort of finishes the corners off. And that'll look really cute on our bag. Um, this little guy, we're going to go ahead and staple just along the sides. You can barely even see them. They're kind of cute and grangy. Love that.
And then my little gift card can fit perfectly inside of there, which I love. Now you can obviously get cute little bags. Um, I really like doing these ones, particularly if we're going to finish off the top of one. So let's go ahead and should we do the hot cocoa in there? I'm feeling like that should go with that, but I don't know. Let's do this one. There's nothing like craft brown crinkle. I swear I could do these for days. They're so much fun. And really and truly, when you think about it, when we give gifts at the holidays, more times than not, this is exactly how they are. You know, they're just small, thoughtful little gifts where you're spending like maybe five, 10, 15, 20 bucks on somebody and you just get to spread the love. So you can do that. And then, like I said, you can throw in your little hot cocoa in there too. I don't know, I'm feeling like this needs something else. I'm not sure what. I'm thinking a gift card would be really cute in this one. So just assume you have a gift card in this one. We'll seal off the back of this. And then with our tiny attacher, we'll come in, run the bag at the top. and then just do a couple staples to kind of secure it all in there. Really fun way to throw in a little gift card. Now for this guy. I'm actually going to staple the hot cocoa and then on the outside cinnamon sticks on that one I just grabbed a little bit of jute Baker's twine jute anything like that would be really cute and not only is that kind of a sweet little ornament that you can kind of hang up and they can reuse but you have your little gift card kind of tucked into there as well So if I just take my little craft scissors, I can trim off the edge and that's really sweet. I like that. That's just tiny, tiny bit. It almost feels redundant, but really that's the whole idea of making something feel different and unique, right? You don't want everything to look exactly the same. And there you have it. You have your cute little baggies and your little um, gift cards and everything ready to go. And if you just have a whole basket of these ready to go, then you're just kind of set for the holidays. So think hot cocoa, think like instant coffee, think um, peppermint bark tea bags. You know what I mean? It just kind of depends on what you want to throw in there. You can have your to and from labels on here. The bottom line is, is you've just created a really sweet gift. Um, for loved ones and you get to um, give it away and it's not feeling like it's just a plain gift card stuck in a, in a card It's a little more thoughtful. Hope you guys enjoyed that simple little watercolor and paper craft tutorial I look forward to seeing you guys back for more holiday tutorials. Bye